So guys, so happy to have you here, very excited to watch your Indiegogo campaign video. It's so cool and I just loved how you made it so much fun, you know, it's very exciting and <laughs> this kind of thing and um, uh, I just love how you guys um, mix creativity, you know, and uh, you're laid back, you know, while doing this. So, uh, how did you get inspired to do this campaign? Um, and just uh, tell us about this campaign a little bit. Okay, well, well we, we have uh, like some friends in Sierra Leone, um, part of the church there. Um, so, we've got some partnerships there already. And we've heard about the, obviously, the real need there um, in countries that decimated after the war um, 10, 11 years ago. There's very, very little infrastructure, there's hardly anything there, you know, in terms of supply and the water situations or for electricity. It's just real need, real poverty. And we've got so much, you know, and we want to give something of what we've got, our skills, our time. Um, to to those that need it, and we've got that opportunity, so um, we're going to make the most of it. Yeah, and uh, so um, I heard that there was somebody else uh, who bought the sewing machines already, right? So yeah. they uh, a girl raised the money for um, part of this campaign, right? Part of this yeah. project. Yeah, a friend of ours, Esther. Esther Ross, her name is, and she she got inspired about it as well about this um, helping these women at this camp, um, hearing of their need there. You know the the fact that they have nothing to do because a lot of these women they can't read or write, um, they have no nothing to go for. They're just you know there, um, and this idea of giving them you know something to do, um, and she she. Basically, she went on to collect these machines. Um, she, she did very well, actually. She got onto the radio in Northampton, a small town here, and she managed to collect about 20, 30 machines. People are just um, giving them in, um, which which are obviously quite they're quite unique machines because they're not electric. They're all very old machines that are mechanical. Okay. So they electricity to use. So that, yeah, so that they don't depend on the electricity or anything like that, right? Just set them up and away they go. Okay. <coughs> and um, what, what are your, um, you know, skills? What are the skills that you're putting into this project? Okay, well, I'm a carpenter, so I'm going to be um, helping to make tables um, for this sewing project um, and we're designing a sort of a shelter as well because there's three projects. We've got um, we're building a, a shelter for some goats and stuff like that. So we'll be designing that, um, making quite a bit of it over here as some like the, the tools and stuff that you, and accessibility to power over there is a bit difficult. So we're going to aim to sort of make quite a lot of stuff over here and um, and then ship it out over and um, and then hopefully get quite a few people alongside helping to put like put the shelter up and uh, to build alongside us and so that's, I suppose that's my, my skill set is, is sort of helping to, to make that happen to to build stuff over here um, and yeah just to help release people over there into you know expanding the project after we've gone. Joe's the, Joe's the craftsman, <laughs> I, okay. I'm the organiser, I'm the organiser and the financial man. <laughs> and uh, we, we've got other contacts and people that we, we're trying to draw in to the project so there's an ownership across you know a lot of different people and skills so we're making the most of that as well so we've got people designing the goat shelter and the benches and tables so that you know we're drawing more people into it and Aidan of course is our, our yeah. campaign man and <laughs> technician <laughs> we can do without him. <laughs> and how, 
how do you integrate your uh, your lives into this project? So, what do you do um, apart from this project? <laughs> oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be working nights. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're part of a church, and so that's quite a, an involved church in, in many things. So um, I guess with our lives are quite packed with um, helping people um, over in England and stuff like that. So we've, me, me and Simeon and Aidan, we're quite involved with lots of, of youth in, in the area where we are. and. Um, I suppose that like, with this, we're, we're getting as many people on board in our church um, as possible. And we've raised quite a lot of funds through just the church so far, and that's that's been incredible, like a bit of a blessing, really. And um, but I, f I think like the amazing thing we've got is that people come on board as as you talk something up, as you build something up. Lots of people come on board, and that's um, that's been great, real help. Like like Simeon was saying, we can ask people to help, like labour and do stuff make make the tables with us I think we're gonna have a few days where we we make stuff together just get a big group of lads and, and go for it and we've already spoke about Esther she's obviously done a bit of groundwork on this project so you know she's she's already raised the awareness so we can sort of use that a bit and um, yeah and make it happen really how much money have we raised online and online yeah. so far? well there's there's different parties raising money for it but I think for us we've raised just over three thousand, and there's others that have raised in combination probably three or four as well. So awesome, awesome. So it's a uh, is it Indiegogo or uh, just your local kind of community supporting you? I think it's, it's a lot of uh, friends and contacts of the church funding. I think Indiegogo has given it good exposure. There's there's not a lot that's actually been raised on the campaign online. But I think it's given it good exposure. A lot of people giving direct, which is actually better for us because Indiegogo take a cut of funds, whereas if people send a check, then we get all the money. So yeah. gives you good credibility. Yeah. Yeah. So how long have you worked on this uh, project, really, with Esther as well? Um, okay, so Esther's. Been working on this for about a year and a half now. Um, she went on radio last year, and then the machine started coming in. Um, we've been involved since February. Um, that's when we sort of organised to go to Sierra Leone, and we started planning these projects with with our guys over there. Um, and gradually, we've been getting you know more clearer picture of what's going on and what we need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And trying to focus down the scope of the project so that we can be effective in the time that we're there, and so that they, you know, they have a lasting effect and things carry on. Are all three of you going there? Aiden's not. <laughs> Aiden is staying to take care of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be posting the updates from home. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how long are you planning on staying in Sierra Leone? I think it's, I think it's two weeks. Just, just, just for two weeks. But I don't know. <laughs> it might, might be longer if, if we get there. <laughs> so, so guys, you know, uh, this country is so far uh, from England, right? And um, I'm talking about Sierra Leone. And um, how do others support you, you know how do they feel about this project because you know it's it's kind of hard to um, predict what's gonna happen and it's kind of it's kind of hard to believe that oh okay so we can really make a difference there so um, what is your perspective on this I think you're you're quite aware that um, that you want it to be something that's sustainable and uh, like, I suppose when it comes to people's money you, you feel like in a bit of an honorary place of, of trust and so I guess like for us we, we, we consider it and think we, we want to give it the best and, and give it the best opportunity, the best chance to work and um, I think that's where we've been sort of fo focusing the picture you know obviously when you first sort of take on a like, look at, at doing a project like this it's 
it like it's quite a big picture and it's hard to focus it down on something narrow and I suppose that's where we're, we're wanting to get the maximum out of what we're doing and um, fortunately we've got a lot of people who, who we know really well um, like in particularly in church I, I guess and um, so so that helps because there's already a trust relationship there but um, I, I suppose in terms of the public I suppose we just want people to know that we're we're guys who, who want to do something um, we're, we're wanting to, to give it our best and uh, we're, we're fully aware that we're, we're in a trusted place and we want to make the most of that we want to sort of we want to give it our best shot so that's what we're doing Joe said about sustainability as well um, I think it's much better to do something really small and simple that's sustainable that can be carried on by people in the local area than something uh, big which is, which just happens once yeah, M much better to do something small than, than a firework, which is very showy but doesn't last because people can own it in the local area and it can continue for forever. Um, so the, the projects that we're doing are investing into the local communities like the school, like the sewing machine project, like the, the farm. So it's stuff that can be taken on by the communities there. So uh, when this, is, this whole thing is set up, uh, who are they going to... Uh, send their, sell their products to. Okay, that's something that we're looking to at the moment. I think initially it's going to be about training the women to, to make garments and, and stuff like that. And that obviously gives them uh, a sense of dignity, a sense of doing something with their time. Um, and I think the challenge would be then giving themselves to that discipline, you know, because these, these women, they haven't been able to read, write, they haven't had any of that sort of learning discipline, so that would be a challenge. But um, eventually, that will go on to them, you know, being able to repair their own clothes and repair children's clothes, which is quite a, a big thing, you know, for children going to school. They don't have any clothing, stuff like that. So that's an opportunity there. Um, we're also exploring the possibility of um, a line coming back to England, you know, selling back to England and finding a line here. Um, that's something we're looking at at the moment with Esther and, and, and another guy as well. Okay, so uh, technically you could sell the garments in, in your church as well, right? Yeah, that is, that is a possibility, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, yeah. and which city are you in? Um, it's not a city, it's a town, but Northampton. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to ask you, you know, where, where are you going with this project? Do you think you're going to work on it uh, full time at some point? Uh, do you want to turn it into a job? What do you think? I guess, I guess, like, um, with, yeah, this is just a bit of a, it's, it's only two weeks, I suppose, at the minute in November. Um, but beyond that, I think when once you've gone to a place like Africa and you've seen the poverty and you've seen um, how people live over there and it's like the desperate state of it really, I think you can't help but your heart's be sort of tugged at a little bit. And so I suppose at some point we'd hope, hope to maybe do a bit more on the project over there and, and definitely we'll will be wanting to facilitate it, it um, carrying on and making sure that it's still working over there and um, after we've gone and, and I, I guess that's the bonus about knowing people over there is that we'll be able to keep on top of it and, and to be saying oh, what what's the next need or where does this need to go, are you doing it, are you, are you taking it forward, that sort of thing. No plans as yet though. No plans as yet of, of going back but obviously I think yeah, Tom will tell on that one. Yeah. Uh, so, are you going to be posting updates about the project? And mm. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Aiden's the man. <laughs> In the next few weeks, we'll be working quite a lot on this project. I mean, you know, for ma making all the stuff, getting everything together. Um, the container we're shipping over is is going in September, so we've got about six weeks to get quite a lot of stuff together. Mm -hmm. So, um, we'll be. It will be keeping updated, so yeah. We'll have two tiers of updates really because there's there's a perk on the project which is exclusive updates closer to it. Yeah. So 
think for every update we have, we'll have something very simple for the Facebook page mm -hmm. and Indiegogo campaign. Mm -hmm. um, with a photo, hopefully, and something more detailed mm -hmm. as an email for to claim that perk. Do you think it's better to start a company that would support this uh, women, right, in uh, Sierra Leone, or is it better to uh, just fund everything from donations? I think both. I think you need donations to start something off. But as we said, things we want things to be sustainable, and you, you can't just keep asking the same people to fund something. You can you can ask ask people to fund something to start it off. Okay. And there's, there's a lot of capital. It, it, yeah, a lot of excitement because it's, it's something new, and so they want to give to it. Um, but for the ongoing cost, it's very good for it to start to you know, fund itself, so it's commercially viable and it becomes something which can gather momentum. And so you can start small that way, but build it up over time rather than having to do lots of work to get donations to start it big and then it, it needs feeding with money. If you start it small, it can build up mm. if it can fund itself. So I think a bit of both probably. So what's your idea on how to turn this into a socially conscious enterprise? Well, we, our focus is on making sure that there's this training is carried out, yeah, and that will be fairly long term, you know, in the next year, two years, um, and we'll be looking for opportunities for that, for those lines to develop, you know, in terms of selling, so that they can begin to fund themselves, and um, an idea is to, for some of the spare machines, that once they, if they finish their training, they're given a machine, for themselves, so that you know they can carry on or set themselves up, you know. And as that develops, then we can see, you know, perhaps they need something as well. You know, they need a little setup um, for themselves to be able to work in um, once they've done the training. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is also something that Esther's quite passionate about, um, making it something that's. That, that's viable and actually like workable. I mean, it's easy just to send a load of machines and tables out and and just to hope that something happens. But realistically, we know that you know something's got to be like come out of it to be set up from it. And so I think that's something that Esther's particularly pursuing, like um, and and going. We want to make this go somewhere. And she's she's been raising quite a lot of money and stuff like that for outside of. Um, well, before this even like started with the rest of the project, so yeah, it's, I think it's definitely something that we're we're wanting to know where it's going to go. And um, I suppose again, it's coming down to that sort of trust factor of, of of making sure that you know you you do the most with what people have given, and um, and and make sure it actually goes somewhere rather than just being you know a quick flash in the pan job and it doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah. You know. Okay. We'll be seeking while we're there, particularly to seek out contacts and to link people up so that there's, you know, there's opportunities open up there, you know, with the different groups that we meet. So, you know, um, make, make the use of the knowledge base there and the understanding there of, of how things are. Yeah, okay, got so it. Just, um, clothing and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. It was such a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I cannot wait to share this with everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for picking up our projects and getting in touch. It's been really yeah, useful. Yeah, anytime, guys. So good. I love it.